All right, so first of all, I freaking did it. I went sub 130. I did it, I went sub 90, and I've been wanting to do that for a long while. Uh, it's not like I've tried a bunch of times and failed. I've tried a couple of times and failed, but that was back in like 2018 and early 2019, and since then I haven't raced, so um, I was pretty confident that I was gonna do it, and uh, I did it. And not only did I just go 129, but I went 128. 48 so i'm extremely satisfied with the uh, with the race how it went how it felt how i executed uh, it was just my best race ever really and i want to tell you all about it so in this video i'm going to go into the details uh on in terms of like my pacing my hydration strategy my nutrition strategy uh, what I felt uh, during the race, what I thought, uh, how I approached the, the execution of the race. Uh, that's what this video is about. But I want you to stay tuned because in a few days I'm coming out with another video which is going to be the race vlog, okay? And the race vlog is not made by me. Well, I'm editing it, but it was actually my friend Thomas who did the filming and the commentating, some, most of it anyway. So he's done a great job on race day, on his e-scooter, uh, filming with a GoPro camera and his phone, and it was just like, he did a great job, and we got lots of cool footage, and I'm gonna make a race vlog that's coming out in a few days, okay? So stay tuned for that race vlog. But for today, let's get into some of the stats and some of those uh, nerdy uh, aspects of running a race. So, woke up on race day feeling fresh, feeling great. The taper uh, was was done well. Um, temperature was about probably around 10 degrees Celsius when I started the race. Possibly it go, went up to like 11. Uh, it was overcast. So it was really optimal conditions. And I, I, I was worried in the beginning, like, or before the race, is this gonna be too cold, you know? A little, a little worried, but, but actually it was definitely not too cold. It was not too warm either though. It was absolutely perfect, okay? And that's what uh, scientific uh, literature is also indicating, that about around 10 degrees Celsius is actually perfect for um, performance in those long distance races. So arrived in Oslo, um, did the warm up, felt good, and the race gun went off. We started off. I was in a pace group uh, with uh, two pacers. Uh, with they had like flags uh, for uh, 130, and and they you know they promise that they will cross the finish line before 130. So you can sort of trust that they will set a good pace. And we were a good uh, pack of runners trying to go uh, beyond that um, that barrier of 130. It was just an awesome day. Uh, I had uh, Thomas with me, as I said, and then I had my brother, Mads, and my parents. Uh, so they were supporting me, and that meant a lot to me to have them there because it, it gave me moral support. I look forward to seeing them several places along the, the, uh, the course, uh, cheering for me, and it sort of, yeah, it gave me a boost for sure. And also in the in the pack there was uh, another friend of mine, Geir, who was also running for a sub 130. He also wanted to go below that barrier, never done that before. Having him there was actually also quite nice um, because I felt, I don't know, I just felt safer. I knew like, I know he, he's a good runner and he was in the pack there and I could see him at all times and I knew that, you know, He's there, I'm here, we're here, the pack is here, the pace, it was just, the whole situation was just very, um, very good. And uh, he, he made his goal as well. I did outkick him at the end, um, possibly at the expense of my calf though. So I don't know how smart that was. Uh, so essentially we're pretty much at the same level of fitness. I knew of course in my own self, I knew that I didn't want to rely 100% on someone else to do the pacing for me, especially not in the early stages. Because I went into this race not really knowing my fitness, uh, you know, down to the minute. So I was like, am I just on the edge? Will I go sub 130? I, I thought I was gonna go uh, below it. I, I was pretty confident, but I wasn't entirely sure. And I didn't wanna blow it in the first half of the race by just trying to stick with some pacers who were running too fast. Turns out they weren't really running too fast, although perhaps they were a tad ahead of schedule, um, really. Um, so 
I thought it was probably a good idea for me then to to relax a little bit. I noticed that very quickly that the days sort of went a little bit ahead and I was like, you know what? I'm gonna chill a little bit on this these first few kilometers. There's a little bit of hilly terrain over the first few Ks, even though it is a fairly flat race. So I, I just sat back a little bit. I allowed the pack to just stretch out a little bit. I wasn't worried. I knew I, I could always catch up with them later. And, uh, and if I tried to stick with them without being fit for that, I would pay um, dearly later, as I learned in my uh, half marathon back in 2019 in Goten Gothenburg, Göteborg, Göteborg, uh, I'll put a link to the video here probably, where I talk about what went wrong in that race, uh, went out way too hard. So I didn't want to do that. I wanted to start conservatively. And indeed I did, I started conservatively, I was still in the pack though, uh, and um, feeling great. Like after just a few kilometers, I was like, this feels awesome. I, I'm really in control, the pace is, is easy. I was focused and um, I, I just, I had a good time. Um, well, as we go through the race, I guess I can take a quick look on my Strava data, data here. Um, so the kilometer splits, okay, the, the time per kilometer, I'll, I'll give you the, the splits. Uh, bear in mind that going sub 130, you want to you wanna be at 4.15 per kilometer. 4 minutes 15 seconds per kilometer, that's spot on sub 90 pace. Um, so I want to be below that, but not too much below it, of course, because that may, might be too fast. Uh, I ended up averaging uh, 4.12 for the whole race. Um, which is uh, 128, uh, 48, and my kilometer splits are as follows from the beginning 412, 417. Okay, so 417, the second kilometer, a little slower, right? Like just being a little careful. First one is a little bit fast, actually. 412, 417, 416, 414, 410, 412, 409. Okay, we're on the flat now, 409. 410, 413, 413, 419. And, th and there's two laps. You run two laps in the same route. So that 419, which was like my 13th kilometer, that's the same one as um, one of those early ones, which was like 416 or something. So uh, it sort of makes sense. We get to those hilly portions again. 419, okay? 413, 410, 416, 416, 415. And at that point, I, I, I said to myself that, you know what? I'm going to kick a little bit now. I'm going to, for the last two kilometers, I'm going to run much faster. <laughs> and I, I did. I ran 408, 402, and 356, actually, for the last three kilometers. 356 for the last one. So, um, and I remember noticing in those last kilometers, increasing the pace from like 412-ish to 405 and approaching even down to four minutes per kilometer, that that was above the threshold. Like at that point, I started feeling the, 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 the legs seizing up a little bit. Uh, I started getting a cramp. Uh, I started actually feeling um, like I was not entirely in control. Whereas at 412, I was completely in control. So certainly below or slower than my lactate threshold, which is likely somewhere around 405, 406, something like that per kilometer at the moment, which is probably the fittest that I've ever been really, uh, which is cool on less training, right? Like I've, I'm only, I've only trained 60 to 70 kilometers per week. Uh, I, I, that's less than I did in 2019 when I crashed and burned at the half marathon in, in Sweden. So cool, cool. I have, a, I'm, I'm like, and I feel now that I've broken that barrier, the 130 barrier, I feel almost like the whole 20, the whole 20s, you know, 127, 26, 25, 24, 23, all the way down to 120, feels really within reach. Like it's mentally, it just feels like I've crossed a barrier and now it's just the whole, that whole spectrum of paces or, or, or times is, is mine for the taking and I can just, I can do it, I will do it. Uh, so it'll be interesting to see next year. I'm very confident with this now that I believe I'll be able to go sub three for the marathon next year. Uh, but that's like a year from now. My plan is to do a, um, a 5k build up next spring. But we'll we'll talk about my plan going forward in another video. 
Anyway, those were my splits. Uh, my heart rate, I did not look at my heart rate like I've done in past races, but I had it, I had the heart rate monitor on, uh, but I didn't want to look at it. I just want to feel my body instead of looking at the numbers all the time. But it turns out it, it was around where it usually is for my for my half marathons, which is just around 190 per, uh, 190 beats per minute, 190. So I have a max heart rate of 205 or 206. So technically that's above my lactate threshold or perhaps just at it, but um, you know, the adrenaline and everything, it makes, makes the heart rate a little higher during races. Anyway, that, that, that's, that was the pacing um, and the heart rate. Looking back at it, I realized that I was perhaps running slower than I could have. I'm pretty sure that I've, I could have actually gone faster. I, I think, honestly, I could probably go 127 something, uh, uh, below 128 even. I, I'm pretty sure I could do that um, because because of the feeling that I had throughout the race, which was the feeling of being totally in control, not really suffering until the last few kilometers when I was pushing it a lot, of course. But, uh, and of course, I'm not saying I wasn't, I was not relaxed. I was working hard. I was working steady. It was hard work. Um, it took uh, effort, no doubt, but it, it felt like I could have kept going for longer though in that pace, which means that I could probably run two or three seconds faster on average per kilometer uh, and still finish uh, strong, uh, which would have been sub 128 actually. But that's totally fine. I'm not not at all uh, upset about that. the fact that I could have gone faster. I'm happy that I did it just the way I did it. Why? Because I didn't know. It was like uncharted territory for me, right? I didn't know exactly what to expect. So uh, I didn't want to blow my chance of going sub 90 uh this time i wanted that 129 i needed it <laughs> i feel like i i really needed it if i didn't go below 130 in this try i would be very frustrated to be perfectly honest uh, and i didn't want to blow it i did i wanted to be conservative and just run steady so i just stayed in that pack and i think also probably that i got a lot or definitely i got a lot out of being in the pack mentally knowing we we're in it together um physically you know for, in terms of the air resistance there was less air resistance less wind in a pack of course and also just mentally not having to worry about whether i was on pace or not just sort of surrendering a little bit to the pace of the pack and the pacers and allowing myself to mentally just uh, trust that i was gonna make it uh, so that was good um and and of course if i if i actually left that pack and tried to go sub 128 and i ran alone the whole time would have been able to like that would have been much harder so maybe i wouldn't be able to go actually sub 128 i don't know i don't know but i'm pretty sure that next year i'll be able to go sub 125 actually i i hope so um with a lot of training of course a lot of training i'm very motivated to train now as always <laughs> a little bit about nutrition and hydration so uh, there's two uh, there's two 10k loops right or two 10 and a half ish k loops for a total half marathon and there's two uh, aid stations on each lap so four aid stations total um, I had my sugar mix um, just maltodextrin fructose and an electrolyte mix basically just salt uh, like sodium and potassium and some other things chloride a little magnesium I think in there um, that I mix together at f by myself, basically a gel, and I have it in this little squeezy thing that I had in my belt. Um, went f fine, I think I had about 120 grams of carbohydrate total, divided by four uh, aid stations. I would, I, I know, I knew where the aid stations were, so well before approaching the aid station, like, you know, like two minutes before or something, I would, I would take out the squeezy bottle and I would uh, take my sugar, put it back, relax, swallow the sugar, uh, which was very thick, and then uh, get to the aid station and, and sort of uh, flush it down with, with uh, water. I would have water at the aid stations. And I knew I needed to get in about, you know, 150, 
you know milliliters of water which is like a small cup really at the aid stations but i knew also that i would spill a lot and it's difficult to drink while running so i usually i, I always grab two cups and then i squeeze them in the middle at the top right cardboard cups so there's this little bit, bit of a, like a spout is that the right word where you could sort of pour it in like a bottle almost so i did that but it was difficult it was difficult to get it in running in that pace i would choke on the water and cough and, and I would get it everywhere and so did everyone else uh, so I, I don't think I got as much water in during the first lap the two aid stations as I should have so on the second lap also knowing that I was definitely gonna go sub 90 or I was pretty sure anyway unless unless something crazy happened in the latter um, third of the race so because I was confident with the pace I decided instead to start slow slowing down more at the aid stations and almost stop actually so like just drink the water throw it jog drink a little bit more jog drink a little bit more throw it away probably lost five seconds uh, on each aid station 10 seconds total uh, but that was that was worth it so during the last uh, few kilometers i i went really hard as i said and and i actually started getting a cramp in my right calf and my you know i had a calf strain a few months ago and I did something really stupid at the beginning of the race. I jumped over a fence to get into the pace group um, in the field and I jumped over a fence and I, I strained my calf again in the same place or I re-injured it or basically I it ripped it up a little bit and that was like, oh my God, no, what have I done, right? I thought I was gonna fuck up the whole race. Luckily, I didn't. I didn't notice the calf pain at all during the race until those last few kilometers, though. Um, and now I, it is, it's pretty bad. Uh, it's not bad, really, but it's, it's, it's frustrating. So rehab again, but um, yeah, don't jump over fences before races, basically. And I also really, actually, I don't like the idea of doing a kick like that at the end of a race. I prefer just running a little faster overall, you know, average pace a little faster. Uh, and perhaps, you know, a little bit faster in the last couple of kilometers, but not that much faster because I felt like I would, the injury risk was pretty big during those last kilometers for me. Not, not so cool. I've got a lot of cool footage though. Some pictures also that I bought from the professional photographers and also Thomas took pictures. My mom and dad took pictures uh, and my brother mads so um go check out my instagram there's a link in the description i got i'm putting out a lot of good content there i feel like so definitely follow me on instagram and follow me on strava too there's a link in the description uh, to to actually look at the race details to look at my training log that sort of thing uh, now these last uh, couple of days i've just been resting no training at all no training today either the rest of this week i'll do some cross training a little bit of light strength some cycling some swimming and then uh, from next week onwards, I'll start running again. Uh, so basically a week off running. I feel like that's a good idea. Uh, and uh, then building it back up again and getting into a new base training phase where I'm going to try and push the volume uh, a lot. Anyway, uh, I think that's it for now. I think that's, uh, that's probably more details than anyone asked for. Um, if you stick around this far, uh, you probably ask nerdy about running as I am and you can definitely leave a comment perhaps to tell me what you think about what I just said uh, any ideas or thoughts uh, that you want to share regarding this race or maybe about your own training let me know how your own training is going are you training for a for a sub 90 are you training for a sub two hour half marathon perhaps or any distance any goal it's all you know it's all about uh, pushing the um, pushing our own limits and growing and evolving and chasing down um, new challenges, right? That's what it's all about. I, I honestly don't think that winning the Olympics would make me any happier than what just happened uh, in this half marathon. For me to go now sub 130, which has been a goal for a while, and just to have a good race and just feel so amazing and have such a good day with my family, my friends, and with with this whole event, I, hon I honestly don't feel like that could, like I could be any happier. Like I was super happy, I'm still super happy and satisfied with that. And now I'm looking for new, setting new goals and, and chasing new PRs, of course. If I was in the Olympics 
and I won the Olympics, I would get more prestige, I would get more money <laughs> for sure. I would get, uh, it would be more, well, more prestige, but I don't know that I would be more happy about it. Like, I, I actually think that at any level of running, you can be perfectly happy and, and um, ecstatic when you're reaching your goals, regardless of the level. Anyway, uh, thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for that race vlog coming up soon. And uh, hope your own running is going well. All right. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.